uh, Lydia Putnam. Uh, here's a question from the webpage. Uh, here's a question sparked by just another straight shooter's recent post on the theory that as a society we're due for another civil war. How does one prepare for this sort of thing without becoming a prepper, especially since unlike with the Civil War, there's no apparent geographical border to provide some amount of physical separation aside from the West Coast, I suppose. Another great question, um, Lydia. Uh, I, it certainly feels like a Civil War going on right now, and I know it feels that way to you too, but... Um, the problem, the problem with the Civil War is, uh, with the new Civil War, is exactly what you say. I mean, here in Los Angeles, even in Santa Monica, where overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly progressive, probably three people in ten in Santa Monica voted for Donald Trump and probably closer to four. Not that many will admit it publicly, but nevertheless. So even, even in the most... Um, partisan of places, likewise in Texas, uh, especially more and more every day. Forget Austin, we, but how many how many Republicans are there in Austin? I know not a whole lot of them admit it, but how many are there? I'll bet it's three in ten or more. Um, so uh, what do you do about that? That's a real problem, um, and and it's also it's also kind of the solution in a way too because it's like you're. You're talking about a shooting war with people who you may be sitting next to in a Dodger game, uh, and it's and it's an indication of how divided the country is and how much politics has invaded our lives. That it generates this kind of rage. Uh, there's a pretty compelling case to be made for. Um, uh, either Russian, Chinese, or both. I don't. I don't care. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's everybody. Basically, putting together a series of, of of stories and 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 phrasing the news in such a way so that each side becomes more and more and more distrustful of the other and more and more disgusted by the other certainly works with me, and um, and to the degree about this being fake news, uh, I don't. Um, I don't think there's anything fake about it. It's in the interest of Russia, China, and all of our adversaries to see the United States tear itself apart. But um, but it's it's almost impossible to imagine. I, for for example, it's virtually impossible to imagine. It's 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 impossible to imagine police shooting into a crowd of rioters in this country. Obviously, if, if there was a case where they were being, uh, you know, beaten to death or set on fire, you know, defensively. But the idea that, that, uh, that a, a U.S. police force in, in 2019 could be in a line across the street and having a line of marchers marching towards them and have them open fire, I just can't imagine a world where that happens. And to imagine that means you'd have to imagine a world where, you know, um, can anybody imagine a world where, um, where you know, B-2 bombers are launching airstrikes on Boise. Uh, now, uh, our friend from uh, Lithuania mentions Waco and 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 then uh, Miracle Valley, Ruby Ridge, all of those things. Absolutely true. But that's not a civil war. Uh, and, and, of course, the more recent thing um, that we had uh, with Bureau of Land Management. That's not civil war either. That is a... Um, that is a federal government representing 300 million people up against a handful of people in case of Ruby Ridge or scores or dozens of them, but that's not a civil war. Um, and so it's hard to believe uh, that such a thing could ever happen as much as, you know, as much as there are times when you just want to just do it. The, the, tragical, the, tragical, the tragic thing about this is that um, is that, as I said, you know, you can, you can be in a supermarket having a conversation with somebody and getting along just fine. Uh, and now all of a sudden, you know, you find out that they voted for somebody you don't like, you're ready to kill them. It, it's hard to imagine that that... At the very least, I'm not going to go into the conspiracy aspect of it because I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but in any event, 
uh, it would be in the interest of, of foreign powers to present things that way. Hang on one second. I just got to turn the air conditioning down if it's still on. It's getting really toasty in here. Uh, go about your business. I'll be right back. Um, so, so yeah, ter you, we think of the Civil War, and we think of it as, okay, it's a war that happened internally, but it wasn't. It was a war between two countries. I mean, it was a war between the United States of America and the Confederate States of America. Uh, and I'm not ceding the Union cause to say uh, two countries, by the way, but that's certainly the way to think of it. Um, so... You know, in, a, in the Civil War, you had people who believed one thing passionately and people who believed another thing passionately. Um, and uh, the reason you had a Civil War was all the people who believed one thing lived in one place and all the people who believed something else believed, lived in another place. And you could go from one place to another and shoot those other people. And, and that's how you had a Civil War, even though given the scale of the American Civil War, each side of the Civil War is a giant nation unto itself. Um, but I can't imagine what a Civil War would look like here. Now, with that said, uh, somebody just in the comment section, uh, let's see where it goes. Steve Darrow said that Prager you did a video in New York City asking people on the street if they had any Republican friends, and they were shocked at the question. Uh, Look, I, I believe in honesty and, 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 and truth and, and, and being, being honest about things the way they see, appear to me. And, and that means if I thought that this was an equal deal, that we were equally guilty, then I, would, then I would admit that. And if I thought it was mostly us doing it, I would admit that too. But it's not. It's just not. It's, there's nobody... There's nobody shooting uh, Democrats at baseball games, and there's nobody that I'm aware of, you know, going around and, 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 and I don't know of any Republican groups that are smashing windows. Uh, I don't know of any Republican students that are, that are b lighting buildings on fire because they didn't want to have a, a liberal speak on their campus. It's not a two-way street. The left is, there's something about people that is, attra something about people that attracts them to, to, collectivism that also attracts them to totalitarianism. They have a desire to have power over other people, and we just don't know what that feels like. We just don't. But we have to admit that those people are there, always have been there, probably always will be there. And so um, since the people that uh, set up this whole operation had read a little history, um, They knew, you know, that it was uh, part of the human condition, and therefore um, said, "Hey, uh, the government doesn't have any right to stop you from speaking your mind, and furthermore, uh, you have the right to." Uh, we recognize the government can also not infringe upon your right to carry a weapon to defend yourself against your own government. Um, so, uh, I can't. Um, I just don't know how a civil war would happen, but but I do see a definite possibility of of conservatives just plain being murdered, and I also see a possibility of conservatives not willing to be murdered uh, and and shooting back. So, what does that look like? It to me, it looks like a series of isolated riots rather than. Civil war. I think the only way you get a civil war is if you have people living on different sides of a border, some sort of geographical border. If you look at other civil wars, let's take the English Civil War, for example. Um, yes, it's all happened within England, but it wasn't like every other person at the pub killing every other person at the pub, which is what we would have here. During the English Civil War, the, the, um, the loyalists uh, to Charles uh, were mostly in the uh, northwest industrialized areas, and most of them loyal to Parliament were down in London and, and southeast. So they were. Charles went um, to where his uh, political base was stronger up in the northwest, and Cromwell 
stayed in the southeast and they fought battles, but they fought battles along a generally demarcated line. Um, it's funny because, uh, in a way, look, if, if they took one state out of the Union and, and, and committed that republic to being a place where the Constitution was treated as if it were law and not just a uh, you know, wall decoration suitable for framing, I think I'd move there. I do. Um, and for those who would say, well, you're abandoning America, it's like, I'm not. I'm taking America with me. I didn't abandon America. America abandoned me. Certainly in California, the things that I see and the things that are on the way in terms of vote harvesting and all the rest of this sham thing, it's like, this isn't America. I don't live in America anymore. Um, I can afford to vacation uh, indefinitely in California. Because I like the um, the weather, I, I, I grew up in Florida, and that's traumatic enough. Uh, and so I elect to stay here for a number of reasons, climate being a big part of it, and another big part of it is somebody has to be, you know, I overuse this uh, analogy, but it's really true. You know, if you're going to be a volcanologist for a living, you got to live near the volcano. So. So, so that's why I'm here. Um, but I can certainly imagine uh, a situation where I would say to myself, that's it, that's just not tolerable anymore. Uh, 